Alrighty, it is 5.30. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll start out with a roll call. Uh, Alder Rust? Present. <laughs> Alder Ramey? Here. <laughs> Alder Heidemann? Here. I'm Alder Becker, and I am here, and uh, Alder Salazar is excused. Uh, we'll start out with the point of belief. Point of belief is to the United States of America. And to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have some new. Uh, we have someone here. I think we'll so we'll do quick introductions. Uh, I'm Dean Decker, chair of the Public Works Committee. Uh, I am Alder District District Six Alder person. Uh, Alderman Heidemann, uh, 10th District South Side of Sheboygan. I am Angela Ramey. I'm uh, District Five Alder. Okay, now I'm Gary Tolferner. I'm uh, voicing my complaint on a newly planted tree. Okay. I'm Zach Rust, uh, Vice Chair, District 8. Okay. Casey Bradley, City Administrator. Joel Colstein, DPW Street Department. Tim Bull, DPW Parks and Forestry. Joe Curlin, DPW Parks and Forestry. Stacy Wesselback, Administrative Clerk. Heather Burke, business manager. And David Peeble, director of public works. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll start with uh, item number five, approval of minutes, October 10th, 2023. I move to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, any discussion on those minutes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Those are approved. Okay, item number six, communica uh, communication from Gary Tofter. That would be me. Okay. Uh, I think we'll uh, hear from you, sir, first. If you want to just give a quick, uh, I ask you, you keep it brief and on topic. Okay. Um, I had a tree removed. Um, it was, I have the date on the, hang on. Um, May 24th of 2022 um, and here's a picture of the stump removal okay and at that time when I talked to Tim he asked me if I wanted another tree in replacement and I distinctly recall what I said. I said, absolutely not. So that was the end of discussion. The next day they came and they removed the tree. So I just got back from Ireland, but like three weeks ago, I contacted Tim and there was a notice on my door saying, that there was going to be a tree planted. And I said, what happened with the discussion that I didn't want one? Okay, so I never heard back, never heard back. Um, and I will back up because the neighbor across the street, Marlene Lacing, she had a tree replaced are cut down as well and she was asked if she wanted another tree replaced uh, in replacement and she said no well unfortunately she passed away last year but the neighbor across the street that does cliff schlegel that lives on the corner of riverdale and gray fox drive he distinctly recalls her stating that she did not need a tree replanted, just like what I was told from you. So anyways, I come back from my vacation and here's my newly planted tree. And you can see, I, I mean, I try to make it as large as I could, but look where the location of this tree is. I mean, did they just drop the co uh, coin and, and plant it? Look where the other one was planted. Unfortunately, 
the three of us, Cliff Schlegel, myself, and Jeff Tim have underground sprinkling systems. Okay, so you can see, here's another proof. I mean, how, how much difference where the new tree is, is planted compared to the other ones that I have on my property. So, okay. And um, I go down Riverdale Avenue, and here's a freshly planted tree. Look how close it is to the curb. Okay, so those trees on Gray Fox Court, that subdivision is 20 some years old. And if the person that would have been the proper one to be speaking, Cliff Schlegel, him and his wife say that we got the bottom of the barrel with the trees. Now, this is just each time we get a little wind, this is the debris that comes off those trees. We have no city sidewalks. We have no street lights. We, I swear, every, every house owner, if they don't have one dog, they got two dogs. And they're walking their dogs and children I've seen because I live right on the corner. I, my, my living room chair is right by the window. So I see everything that goes by on uh, Gray Fox Drive and Gray Fox Court. So they're walking at nine, even I even seen as late as 10 o'clock at night. Now, someone's going to get hurt. I mean, it's as it's simple as that. I mean, we got Jackson School that's just not even a mile away. So, I mean, you have to do something with those trees. And that's why I contacted you. I couldn't even as much as take my garbage out on Fridays because the tree limbs were so low that every time the, the garbage truck came, I had nothing but a mess. And I was sick of cleaning the, the crap up. And I mean, I'm paying almost $5,000 and I just got assessed, I mean, $60,000 with no improvement. And I should have to clean that stuff up in front of my uh, property. I don't think that that's fair. So I have a solution to that right over on the on the um, south side of Jeff Tim's um, driveway, which is not his property, is a tree stump that's still in the ground. Take my tree and put it over there because I do not want that tree. Like I, and like I say, I, I feel that you damaged the underground sprinkling system uh, by planting that tree there. And I will not know until the guy comes in spring. So, and the other thing is those trees are so old that Jeff Tim, um, which the alderman got an a, a email from, those tree roots are, are coming out of the ground that he had to call the sprinkling uh, system guy and he had to cut away some of the roots, you know, and then reconnect the line for the water. So you guys got to do something with those trees. I mean, when I can't even take out my garbage, I mean, it, it did co get corrected after I called you and, but it wouldn't have, if I went to went out there and I said, well, what about, what about on, on Gray Fox Court? He says, well, that isn't on our schedule. Uh, Mrs. Schlegel came out and she says, I need this trimmed here too. She says, we, we can't even cut the grass. That's not on our schedule. So, and I'm there seven years now and I know 
one time I seen uh, an outside concern. I, I don't know the name of it, but it was uh, orange uh, trucks that they they come to the cities and they trim. So I saw that one one time, and now this is the second time now in the seven years that something has been done with our trees. And it's unacceptable. Not when you're paying that kind of money and like they say, safety concerns, I mean uh, like that. When you have children going to school and, and uh, uh, city uh, residents walking their dogs and stuff. And I did hear people fall and cry. I, I'm not running out there. That's not my responsibility. So that's what I have to say. And the alderman has a communication from Jeff T Tim complaining as well. I've already forwarded that through to David. I just I just talked to him about it. So that's in the process. And I'll answer that email to Jeff Tim. So. Okay. Uh, yes, Joe, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. So, Gary, thank you very much for using the city's process of appealing this tree. Um, that's that's why it's in there for, for people that have concerns to, to bring this to this committee. So, a little background: um, we did a uh, we did a brand new um, uh, tree management um, uh, for the city in 2016, and um, you know, ash tree was just the that the ash borer was just found at that time, so it was. It was uh, happened at a really good time to make a new management plan for the city. So um, part of that was we need to get back to planting trees. You know, the goal, because um, for quite a while we weren't planting trees, we were just removing 500 plus trees a year, you know. So um, the goal was to get back um, to, to plant trees in our cities again, where the, where, they're, uh, where the sites are needed. Uh, the goal is to have street line trees uh tree street lined trees along our streets okay that, that's the goal um at the time of that management plan we did a um uh, they did a uh a tree study of with the costs what what our what our tree line what our trees are providing our city and that was well over three million dollars a year um that's takes into effect um Beauty, but uh, economical values mostly. You know uh, what it's doing for the actual um, uh, city. So, so um, we we feel that um, that's that's we've been tr the the longest running tree uh, city tree USA um, in Wisconsin. Um, that's something we've always wanted to keep up. Um, when we started planting again, that was a big question, Gary. What it really was, what about people that don't want trees? Well, if we start honoring that to everybody that doesn't want a tree, there's going to be a lot of holes in that. So we're going to have trees, no trees, trees, no trees. It's going to, ultimately, it's going to make a lot more work. That shouldn't really be the factor. The factor is we want tree-lined streets. So, um, I'm going to let uh, um, our city forester talk a little bit more about how he remembers the conversation going because I would have to back uh, Mr. Bull up here that he would never say, okay, we will never plant a tree here because that hasn't been our policy. So um, yeah. at this time, I'm going to turn it over to, to Tim to talk a little bit about that. But and I, I, I'm just going to interrupt you're, you're, one this second. This is our turn, please. Oh. Sir, you're done. Oh, Sir, okay. this is our turn. Thank you. I, I do want to state I this is the first hearing though about the placement. So that that could have been talked about. We would have been receptive to talking about that, but this is the first time hearing about placement. So thanks, Joe. And and going off the placement thing, I if if the tree's too far from the curb, you know, we can move it we can move it closer to the curb if that's if that's what you desire. Um and if your sprinkler system got damaged, I, I don't think it would would have been because my crew would have told me if they would have hit it. But if it is, we'll take care of it. But um you wouldn't, know, you wouldn't know because it's shut off already. I'm saying in the spring when you turn it on, um, then you'll know and you can let me know. But um, going off what our conversation is, which I get, you know, you don't want a tree. 
and I get, you wouldn't believe how many people don't want trees. Almost, I ask for tree requests off quite often and I, I never get enough to, to fill the quota of trees we need to plant. So then I'll, I'll often fill streets as, you know, if this guy requests one, then I'll fill the remainder of the street if it's an appropriate spot. You know, sometimes we're cutting down trees where it's not appropriate to replace because it's too close to the driveway, too close to a street light, too close to, you know, something, maybe there's overhead power lines, maybe something just isn't right about the spot that it, there shouldn't be a new tree. But in appropriate tree spots, like the one on your property or adjacent to your property, I, would, I was asking you in 2022, if you'd like a tree planted in 2022, because I was still looking for vacancies to plant that fall. And, and you told me no. So I said, okay, I won't plant one in 2022. And I always reserve the right to, to come back and, and plant one. It's just that I, you didn't request one. I was asking if you'd like to request one and, and, and you didn't want to request one. But as you can see, or you probably noticed, we planted probably a dozen or 16 or so trees in your neighborhood this fall. And that's why it made sense to put one in front of your house because we were already there planting other trees um, right next door, you know, or within the same area. Um, so that's what that's that's what I tell everybody as far as they don't want a tree, you know, if, it, if it's an appropriate spot, I'll, I'll you know, if I'm not, I'll say, hey, okay, I won't I won't go out of my way to plant one for you there right away this year, but I'll reserve the right when we're in the area and it makes sense for the crew to be efficient. To fill blocks of trees, then then that time will come. I think I think that's all I have. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Uh, any comments from our committee members? Go ahead, Joe. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, okay, the the fact that that tree was planted, he had numbered. He said first one was twenty nine inches. Now it's seventy nine inches. <clears throat> Is that ordinary where you stagger those trees? In the tree line, is that is that the pattern that you're looking at, or was it just put in the wrong place? Well, yeah. Again, it's the first time hearing about the distance problem, but right. sometimes you'll get to a street where you know we own quite a bit of the right of way. You know, we, right. we own quite a bit, and the the existing trees, like the ones that are on his area, they're pretty large trees, and they're planted pretty close to the curb. So the idea is to get a little bit farther back to to give the tree a little more space to grow. So. It's not that we're trying to stagger them and trying to put it out of the way. It's just more so I wish those other ones were farther out. So if we're going to, if we're going to start, you know, planting new trees, we should plant them in the right spot, you know, tree, right tree in the right spot. So that that's kind of the goal. And having a yard that has a hundred trees, when the wind blows, I pick up branches that that's automatic. And I'm, again, it's something I do not on a daily basis, but every week. So, the, the fact that you have branch problem is it uh, are the trees that were planted there before the ones that are there 20 years yes are they just bad are they just uh, they, they just lose the branches real easy or is it the the majority of them are elm trees near his house and lindens okay and elms especially they'll have lower deadwood that sheds itself quite often okay just naturally the tree as it gets more mature the bottom branches get jaded out and shed themselves and, and the lindens grow really fast, like weeds. So th when the trucks hit them, they're break, they're losing branches. So it's fairly common to have branches in the street like that, like the picture you showed. The linden trees, they probably need to be pruned every five years to actually keep up with their maintenance because they grow okay. so fast. But we're unable to do that with our manpower. Right. No, I, I, I understand. That's virtually impossible to do. Uh, the other thing that I have, I guess, um, putting a tree where a taxpayer doesn't want a tree, though it sounds like a great idea. Even if that tree to me was removed and I drove through the area, you'd still have a tree lined street if that tree wasn't there. I mean, there's, I mean, you'd look down the street and you'd say, well, it's, there's, a, there's a line of trees there and, and it looks very nice. And it's a beautiful neighborhood. So I don't know if the purpose is to try to find another place for that tree, which would be nice. But again, you have a, a policy that says, hey, if we plant it, it stays there. The taxpayer, the property owner doesn't have, can't say, I don't want that tree and you're gonna take that tree out. Is that fair to the taxpayer? Well, I mean, with what we're trying to achieve, I, I really think it is. Um, I disagree. You know, if, if um, 
you're trying to achieve a certain effect uh, for the city. Um, we stop if we start. First of all, they have this amendment process, so right. like, this is this is what is available to them. But like Timmy alluded to before, just because people have to pick up some branches, you're going to get people that don't want a tree. Right. Well, okay. If 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 it goes the way that we're going to move that tree, and other people hear that, you're going to have a lot of more people coming to this committee and saying, "I don't want a tree in front of my house." It raised my sidewalk. It makes a mess. I got to clean up after it. Well, then maybe we need to sit down at the table if that's the route we're going to go and figure out a new policy for our fortunate, uh, urban forest. A couple quick, couple quick questions. What is the right of way um, measurement from the curb about proximity to that area? Because it varies from it, different. It varies in every street. I, okay. We could get a rough estimate, um, not on that map, but. Okay. But it, it's fairly wide there. I, I okay. Think. So that's okay. That that, that tree is approximately six feet in. It, it, it's more than that. that, would, that I, I mean, we can follow up on that. Sure. But I'm confident. It is. Okay. Okay. That's it's separate. 79 inches right from the where it's planted now to the start of the of my grass by the curb, and the other one was 29. So that's quite a difference. In in. It wouldn't be very challenging for us to, to ship the tree closer, you know, I mean, you know, maybe 20 inches or something. If that would, if that would calm this, you know, this is the first time hearing that that's been the issue. I just got back from vacation. I mean, like I say, I had no knowledge that you, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I would have stopped it if I would have been home. I would, I would have, I would have blocked it. But uh, unfortunately, I mean, I was in Ireland and I come home and all of a sudden I see a tree there. And that just, uh, like you say, if it would have been in, this, in the same spot as, as the original one was, as you can see, that would be a different story. Just what I was going to just ask: What, what species of tree is the one that's at the uh, I believe it's a Zelkova, which is in the family of an elm. So it's it's, okay. it's similar to the, its neighboring trees. Okay, it's not exactly the same. Absolutely. Yeah, I was. That's awesome. I mean, if, if if just moving it is the issue, then I think we should definitely move it. I still have a few more things to say. Um, I'm, I I'm of the mindset that um, the way we are fostering our community and I completely agree we want to have um, uh, a shaded beautiful community of uh, tree lined streets. Um, I also think about not necessarily you even though you are the current owner but I think about how long trees take to grow and think about the future of that neighborhood and who would be living in there in the future. Mm -hmm. And if that's, you know, you're making decisions for that as well. But now hearing that it's, it's, um, it, it's, if the if the main concern is is where it's placed in the yard, then I and I'm hearing that you said that you can move it. The other thing I want to say though too is um, concern about just maybe future planting of if if we're planting trees that we cannot keep up with and trimming, then I mean that's then I think we need to to really look at that. I agree with you 100. percent You can't you cannot have trees that are 20 some years old and and if you don't have the manpower that isn't our taxpayers i mean i'm paying over five thousand dollars a year no no sidewalks no street lights the police department doesn't even know that we're in the city so i mean come on let's let's do something about this situation i mean um even the city clerk meredith she said she lived, I don't know, she didn't say where she lives, but she said she lives on the south side and she says there's no sidewalk or nothing either. And she said, and I, show, and I showed her that she says, I totally agree with you. She says, something's got to be done. I mean, because, um, yeah, sure, you're always going to be cleaning up uh, here and there, but these trees are the bottom of the barrel trees and they need to be trimmed. 
Um, especially if you have no sidewalks. That's what I'm getting at. You have no sidewalks, so people are walking in the streets. That's where, where, where I'm getting at. Okay, we've heard that argument, sir. We've heard that argument already. We just want to keep it on track mm -hmm. and everything like that. Um, as far as the sidewalks in the neighborhood, that is how that neighborhood was designed. That's, I mean, if Director Bebo, maybe you can even talk about that as far as, you know, that's the way that, that, that that's how it was designed for, you know, there are certain areas of the city that don't have sidewalks. And exactly. there's a choice, mm -hmm. choice of that neighborhood mm -hmm. basically not right. to have sidewalks. That wouldn't be my choice for a neighborhood. I'm not complaining sidewalks. about the sidewalks. Just the no house, sidewalk. That was the way it was, and that's, that's the right. place. But that, so that, let's take that out of the discussion then, sir, and uh, go back to what the, the tree, the, the tree that's planted, you know, would not be have this issue probably when it gets older because it's a different style of tree. I would uh, uh, imagine. Tim. He alluded to being the bottom of the barrel. These other trees that that's not this new tree. That's not tree. the this new is, tree that's here. More this desirable. Is a different tree. All the trees that are there that everyone is complaining that they're the bottom of the barrel. I mean, and every. But that is not what we're talking about. Your tree, sir, and that's what we're going to keep it on that discussion of the tree that is there. Okay, okay so that's, that's that's fine. We're not talking about the other trees okay. in the neighborhood. Okay, but you, as you can see on this picture, there's other trees that are there. So t removing that tree um, and not replacing it would be just sufficient for me. Well, again, but then when those trees are gone, this. That, that there's a balance to that. There's a balance. Your trees go, the, your, your tree starts growing and grows bigger. Those trees get age out and die. Now, you know, so we're keeping large trees in the neighborhood all along. That's, that's, that, that's, that's the, I, I guess the goal, you know, because you know, that, that's what happens. I'll be honest with you. I wish that was on my street because my street had all ash. So they're all gone. So yeah. all we have is little trees now. I wish we had a couple of bigger trees in our neighborhood because we have nothing anymore because and that's not to the forestry department's prop issue that is just nature <laughs> we, we ended up with ash trees and that didn't go so well yeah. so and, and so I, I believe that that's one of the things that are one of our goals is, is to not have that problem in the future that's why tim is mixing them up he's not putting all ash trees on a street anymore or all lindens or all elms they're they're mixing it up so that there is a I think, I mean, um, so I guess, I don't know, do, do any other comments from? Well, oh, I was just going to say the village of Kohler, they have a, a selection of trees to be planted if if a tree is, is cut down or diseased or whatever. I, I mean, I had, like I said, had no say so in the matter and where that's planted, I, I am totally uh, against that. I don't want that tree that close to my house. Okay. And I'm, I'm looking for, for our committee members. Any of them have any discussions? I think if we can move the tree, then let's just move the tree. So do we need a motion to do that? Do we, or do we somebody put, put a motion through? I move to move the tree to the original spot that was for the tree that was taken down in 2022. I'll second. Okay. Uh, motion and second. Is there any other discussion on that? Uh, go ahead, Just Casey. One comment. Um, you made the comment that you'll go back and fix the water line if it's broke. Um, right. I mean, the water line, if that's properly installed, should not be in our right of way. It, you're, that is correct. It, it might be in our right of way, right? But it, I don't so have I don't know that we would be on the hook to go fix that. So okay, I'd like that. We actually ran into that before, and you're correct. Mm -hmm. We really wouldn't be because it would be in the right of way. Correct. So correct. before you move it, document where it's at, and then in the spring, if if it is, and we do find that we crossed over the right of way, then we would be liable and look at that. But if that was installed in the right of way, we shouldn't be fixing stuff that shouldn't be there. Peter, okay. isn't there a process? That, that the person that's installing the water line, don't they have to go to the city and say, where is the lot line? Where, where, where can, how can they put that in? They just can't run that through our right of way if they're out there doing it. I, I don't understand how somebody would get away with that. They're supposed to. Mm -hmm. they're supposed to. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't have one. Yeah. Okay. That house was built in 1999. Uh -huh. okay. So, all right. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Chair votes aye. That is approved. The tree will be moved. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. We'll go on to number uh, number seven, general ordinance number 27, 23, 24, an ordinance related to one way streets and parking restrictions in the area bounded by South 19th Street, Indiana Avenue, South 24th Street to Georgia Avenue. I'm very familiar with this. Do you want me to take this up? Well, if, you, if, you, if you like, Mr. Chairman, as you know. <laughs> due, to, due, due to the construction on Indiana Avenue, uh, the, the 24th Street through 19th Street were made into two-way streets temporarily for the construction of, uh, for the reconstruction uh, to try to alleviate traffic concerns and stuff like that. As is the uh, construction is almost completed on Indiana Avenue when that completion is we would like those streets returned to the one-way designation as they were. <laughs> Any other questions on that? <laughs> okay. A motion to approve. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Are any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay. Number eight. Resolution number 84-23-24. Resolution adopt a facility fee schedule and equipment fee schedule. Director or Joe or... <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we can, as a, as a team, we can take this as a department. I think, if we, as you know, we've been working with the city attorney's office. We've mm -hmm. been updating our ordinances. And one of the things for especially like special events mm -hmm. was actually adopting a fee schedule versus every fee for every ordinance. This way it's a schedule and then we can do it as part of the committee and adopt it. One of the things that, that is in front of you tonight is, is there's a change. Basically it's bleachers and we do occasionally get for special events requests for bleachers to be moved. They're very uh, cumbersome and difficult. They take some Quite a bit of effort. And right now it's only $50 is the charge. It hasn't been updated for several years. The changes we're, we're, we're saying it should be a hundred. Okay. I mean, if it's, if it's that large of event and they're requiring bleachers, we feel that this is not an exorbitant price to ask to have bleachers move from one area of our park system to a whole other different park somewhere else in the city. That's the first change. The second is, is a, a new charge that we really haven't charged for special events or, or parades, for instance, and it's, it's barricade requests. And we get uh, quite a bit of events or runs, for instance, that will require barricades to be set up. Mm -hmm. So the streets department, along with the parks department, we, we collect them, we'll take them out, we'll set them out the night before. Sometimes our, our personnel is there setting them up the next day, or depending if it's a smaller event, we work with the event organizers to put, deploy the barricades, but we still have to deliver them. And then the next time when the event's over, they put them back, let's say in the corner, and then we'll pick them up. So what you see is a fee schedule per barricade, like a type two barricade. We're saying for every type two barricade, it's a $5 charge. Uh, one with a flasher, if it's going to be out overnight and you need to have a, a beacon on it, it's $7 because it's an extra piece of equipment on, on the barricade. Type three barricades are the larger barricades that have the three bars. Those are usually set up to actually block a road off. Those are $15, uh, the, the larger, and they also have legs that have to be dis dis disassembled and attached in the field. So it takes a little longer time. And again, a little bit upcharge if they have overnight with the flasher. So again, sometimes we'll get as well um, requests for no parking. So we'll put out uh, no, no parking police order signs in advance for a temporary event to keep cars from parking in this area. Those signs, are they take a little extra time, they have to be pounded in. Uh, and we don't like to encourage uh, events to remove parking off of public streets, in other words. So those are $20. That's the additions to our fee schedule that have not been charged in the past. So overall, um, just trying, trying to add 
this is part of our overall fee suite. This would go in line with our other equipment, such as picnic tables that we deliver, benches, uh, a, a grill, for instance, a stage. Help me if I'm forgetting. Dance floor. Dance floor. We have a dance floor we'll, we'll deliver. <laughs> so all sorts of different types of equipment for special events, and, and, and these are the newest ones. So um, we're asking for your support and approval and to adopt this as part of our fee schedule moving forward. This would be starting in 24. Okay. Okay, I guess. Well, I'm sorry. Oh, you go first. Go ahead, Joe, and then. Okay, I'll go first. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. I have a couple, right. of, couple of questions. Um, uh, and this is just my ignorance. Where are the bleachers? I, you, you have bleachers, bleachers in storage, and when people request them for events? We have a few bleachers that we have in our in the back of our facility in our yard, uh -huh. as well as at some locations. For instance, the Kiwanis Park. <laughs> we'll have throughout some, the parks. Throughout the we'll yeah, actually go like a like, we'll like, drive like a ball time. different areas to bring them. Yeah. Is that, how often do you all do that? Not not, not, that, not that often. But, uh, but it does take two people. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, it doesn't sound like fun. Yeah. Um, the other question is for these fees, is it um, per, so $20 per sign, $20, uh, $5 per barricade, seven, you know that? It, it would be $20 for the block. For the block, okay. If you did a, like, if you were having a block party and you wanted to put these signs out ahead of the block party so no one parks along that block, we would charge $20. So it could be five signs, it could be three, it could be eight. Whatever. You know, it, it depends on the length. Oh, by city blocks needed. I could have read. Yes. Um, and then is this uh, is there is this flat fee or is that um, any is there any would you have any wiggle room for nonprofit organizations or is there room for negotiation if need be? I'm only just thinking about really small nonprofits where every dollar counts. Yeah, I, we we get that request all the, time. all the time. And if it's a real hardship, we would bring it to this committee for you. Gotcha. Because if we start picking and choosing within our office, mm -hmm. uh, Heather and her staff would, yeah, it, 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 it's a daily occurrence with nonprofits. And we love, we love to support, go, 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 but we also have to balance totally the other park needs versus so. Right. And my final uh, question is, um, is this going to be integrated? I know we're trying to make it much easier, right, for planning events and getting all of those things. This is going to be nicely integrated into that that's, plan. That's part of the purpose of bringing it and Lovely. getting this approved. That is all my questions. Okay. 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 Nice job. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so the no parking, that's the block. Is, does that fit with uh, police requirements to having a sign? So, the, you know, if you're going to have no parking, for 100 yards or whatever it is, you have to have a, a sign every 15 feet or what, whatever. Yeah, we will. We typically will try to follow the parking regulations. Okay. Usually, it's at the beginning of the block, yeah. and then somewhere mid-block along right. that section. So, uh, depending upon the length, we may add a sign or two here and there. But it's typically at the beginning of a block, no parking for this section. And then another one, like I said, mid block. And then if it's a little bit long, we'll add another one. Okay. Yeah, but again, it's 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 a temporary no parking. Right. right. And uh, in these situations, that still uh, we we it's it's neighbor first, you know, with the neighbors trying to help. Hey, everyone, we're going to be doing this. Heads up, they'll be putting out signs. A lot of cases, it, it will be let's say if it's in some cases, it's for construction purposes. Mm -hmm. If there's going to be construction activity company will say with the, with the property owner, hey, I, I, I have a crane coming in or I have an excavator or some type of equipment that needs to be, this space needs to be occupied. We'll put the signs up for that in advance. Okay. And my other question is, since you're changing these, these fees and you, I'm sure, somewhere have a list of all the people that have requested barricades and throughout the years or within the last year, are they going to get mailed a copy of that schedule so that when they go into planning, <coughs> they go, okay, you know, the city raised their fees, so we're going to need more money. Or like I said, or we're going to need to go because we can't, we couldn't afford them last time. Now we really can't afford them. And then they have an opportunity because you, you must have a, a, a data bank of, of nonprofits and, and clubs that have done that. 
Heather and in, in, in the office have like the special events. Yeah. And a lot of that has been communicated in terms of here's your contract for your special event in advance. Because they get they get they get they actually get a, actually a kind of a, a a form because they get reserved in the system. And I'm, I'm kind of looking at Heather to correct me if I make any assumptions wrong. You're good, Doug. They get a cut so that if they're already pre-populated before the general public has access. So some a lot of those larger and, and more community okay. right. events are already pre-populated for 2024. Gotcha. Okay. And Heather and her office and the team have been communicating. We're going to more online. Right. So that's helping with the process as well. Okay. And to expand upon that, we would notify the ones that this would apply to gotcha. so that they would have a heads up well before the 2024. And we traditionally um, invoice for equipment following January of the year to kind of fall in line for budget cycles and oh, everything okay. so that they have a heads up of how much the fee is going to be and then time to get that together. That's fantastic. Good. Yeah. Great. I, I, won't, I, I think that these fees are reasonable. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they're out of line at all. I think, you know, in some cases I'm waiting, we actually are <laughs> under <laughs> what we should be, but uh, that's my comment on it. Uh, any other yeah. comments? Okay. <laughs> Looking for a motion then. I move to accept the resolution. I'll second. Okay. Motion made. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair will aside. That is approved. Okay. We are at number nine. Next meeting date is November 14th, 2023. Seeing as we have exhausted the agenda, I move for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Host, remote side, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.